Hi guys, it's Sherry. Today we are gonna be making a new project using some alcohol ink and a lot of my scrap clay. I have so much scrap clay, I just need to really just get rid of it. So I have some white and yes, it is dirty, but we are gonna be covering it up. I have this cool like purple with um, copper and gold leaf in it. And then I have this muddy looking one and then a plain black. Now this is clean because this is going to be our back to our pieces. And I also have this stamp here. So I'm just going to pick any of them and kind of go from there. So I'm going to use this one for my stamp and I'm just going to press down on it. And you could do this with any type of stamp. I just really like this one because it's almost like it had, I'll show you, it has um, like lines that you could cut little sections out and it looks really cool. So just roll your stamp onto here. And then peel that up. And it doesn't have to be overly deep. Oops. But you see how it has like the lines where I can cut and section this out. That's what I wanted. So I am going completely different with these uh, metallic inks because I have not tried these colors yet. And I thought they sounded really, really neat. So I want to try them. So I have the metallic pink, orange gold, purple red, red gold, and then black silver. So I'm gonna open up each one of these. And you do have to shake these really well before you use them. Because you'll take notice, you see how it's separated here? So you have to shake it to really get those colors to mix. So I'm gonna shake one real well, and then I'm gonna put some right into my metal pan. And then I'm just gonna soak my brush, and then I will kind of start layering this. And you can see I'm not being very clean with this. I'm just kind of running this over my piece. And I'm moving kind of fast because this ink seems to dry fairly quick, quicker than my normal ones. And you see how I'm not minding if this is mixed because I want this to be really like just a unique piece and you'll see exactly where I'm kind of going with all this. Kind of fill in any holes on your smaller piece here. All right. Now I just need to come up with one more color to fill in those areas. So let's go with a bronze copper. No, actually, you know what? Let's go with, let's do gray plum. So I'm gonna let that take a moment to dry a bit and then we'll start cutting this all up. All right, so my piece is dry. Now my next step is I got my back. This is rolled out to my second thickest setting as well as these pieces. And the very first thing I wanna do is kind of texture the back right away so I don't have to do it later. So I'm just going to get my filter and I'm gonna press on these and just make some nice texture on here. Okay, so that'll be all textured and now I have my piece. So what I wanna do is cut out different strips. So I wanna lay this one this way so the stripes are going a different direction. This one will be different as well and then I have this one that is textured. So each one will be slightly different. So I'm just gonna kinda clean up my edge here 
and then kind of start slicing. And I'm gonna do them at all different sizes as well. So I'll start at, let's start at the top. Start at the top. Let me clean this one up quick. Okay, so once you have your pieces cleaned up, have one laying this way and one laying, you know, long ways. This way, each one kind of lays differently. So I'll take this and then I'm gonna butt this up against here and not like real, real close. I want them to have some space with each other. And I'll do the same here. So this one will have some texture. And remember, do your little stripes different sizes. So I'm gonna cut this one off here. And then I'll take this one and do a real small one. And this is such a perfect way to use up your old scrap. This is not large enough, so I'm gonna go a little bit thicker on that one. Kind of always looking for new ways to use up my old clay. And I thought this was such a perfect way of doing it. It's almost like a little quilt. Okay, so now after this very messy process. <laughs> All right, so let me move this stuff out of the way. This is very messy. Carefully lift your piece up. I am gonna get a piece of wax paper. Let's cut it it a bit and I am going to just push this down not too too hard but I want to make sure that everything is stuck on my clay underneath and that's what we have look how neat that looks so let's just clean this up. Okay, so I am gonna do a few in each one of my cutters. I'm gonna go on a slight angle here. So I'm gonna press down and then I will take my smaller cutter and press down on that one and then carefully lift look how beautiful those are going to look so nice so cut all your pieces out do different shapes sizes and then put it in the oven. This is all Primo at 275 for a half hour. And then I will come back and show you the end results. All right, guys, all my pieces are almost complete and I love them. Look how beautiful these came out. This almost reminds me of like a floorboard. I mean, look how gorgeous that is. How beautiful. And I want to show you some different ways you can do your earrings. So this is the same shape, but I kind of just put the hole on the opposite side. And then when I cut it, I cut this long ways and this one, you know, wide. So you can really see the difference on how you could take these pieces and change them up. And another thing I ended up doing 
was I did these gold on the side and then I did these silver. So I love the silver. I think the silver looks fantastic. Um, but I wanted to show you how those came out and I love these as well. I mean, you can see pinks and purples and golds and silvers and I mean, just all the different colors. They're so beautiful. And then you can see the, the print on it from the stamp and just absolutely gorgeous. I love these and I made a bunch of studs and I did the same thing. I just did these silver and you can see how these ones are all different, but just beautiful. And then I did the squares and I mean, can you see all the colors in those? How gorgeous is that? So, I just wanted to kind of show you a few things before I do the last part. So this is just like a little mini necklace. So just absolutely beautiful. And of course, more studs. So to do the studs, all I, um, <clears throat> to do the studs, all I did was I have this kit and it has the B7000 glue in it. So I just glued on each one of my backs. And I'm going to let these sit overnight so they are completely secure. If you are worried about it, you can put resin on these as well. And I did do resin on the front, as you could tell. And lastly, I'm going to show you quickly how to put together this necklace that I am going to make. And very, very simple. And if you want to know what markers I used, I used this chrome paint marker for the silver. And then I just used this um, gold one. And then for the resin, I ended up using this um, UV resin. So I could put these in the description if you are interested in it, just let me know. But to finish this piece off, I am just going to drill some holes in. And I'm gonna start out with a smaller drill and then I will end up using my hand one and it just kind of seems like it goes easier for me doing it that way. So I'm going to find my middle point here and let me, I'm going to lay a piece of paper down so I could get rid of all the dirt right away. So I know I want my piece to go like that. So I want them to kind of be a little off. So I'm just going to find my middle. And then I just drill right through. And I absolutely love this drill. It makes everything so much simpler. And then I'll just go straight down. Find the middle on the bottom. And do the same thing. And do not go too close to the edge because if you do you will end up um, cracking your piece. And then I just take my hand drill and then just pump through uh, twice and then I will just turn it till I get to the back. And then it will clean through and then I just go through the back. And I'll do this a few times. And I did, ended up doing two coats of my resin to make sure that it had a nice dome on it. So just clean your holes out. And now, remember, I'm going to put this one on an angle like that. So I am going to put my hole this time on the corner. And I'll put another hole down here. And then this one, I'm going to do straight. So I just need one hole right on the top. 
And this one just gives me a bigger hole. And like I said, doing the little one just kind of helps me um, keep this from slipping when I go to drill into the um, resin. So that's basically why I do it twice. Okay, so my next step is to get my big jump rings. And that's about the size that I'm using for these. And the reason I'm going with the bigger is because I want to connect both of my pieces together with one jump ring. So I will just put it in the hole and then I will slip on my next one and then close it. And then I'll do the same thing. Connect it. And now I have a smaller one. I'll open that. And then I will close it. And then I'm going to put my chain on. And I just have a regular gold chain that I bought that's already put together. And I'll slip that right in. Connect it and then there we go. My piece is finished. So very, very simple to connect the pieces and make a beautiful necklace. I really hope you guys enjoy creating these pieces with me. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you all next time. Bye.